everyone, and welcome back to ESO Live. Did you like our little pseudo start? Just pretend Oops. you didn't see that. It was, a, it was a little boo boo. <laughs> Perfection so, every time. We are so professional. So, for <laughs> those of you who are joining us for the first time, ESO Live is our bi weekly show on Twitch. We do it live for better or for worse. <laughs> Doing it live. <laughs> I, am just, I am Jessica Folsom, the community manager um, for the English community for ESO. I'm Gina Bruno, assistant community manager for Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Unlimited. Yes, Tamriel Unlimited. <laughs> and um, we've got a great lineup for you today. We, we have some fun stuff. So we Maybe. hope you'll stick with us and let's take a look at what the show will entail. So first off, we have the official ESOTU news. After that, we are going to announce the winners for the Collectible Creatures Fan Art Contest. Then Very we'll, exciting. Yes. <laughs> then we'll have a Life at Zoss segment with lead graphics programmer Matt McCloskey. After that, we will go over some incoming in-game events that you can join. Then we'll have a short Ask Us Anything segment where we answer some of your questions from the official forums. Lastly, we have some lore bits with Lauren Schick and Zach Bush. And of course, giveaways, Yay! because we always have giveaways. Giveaways, it's Friday. Friday fun day. Okay. Friday before a holiday, too. Indeed, three day weekend. Woohoo! Woo Woo <laughs> so, first, we are going to get into some official ESOTU news. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so uh, to kind of kick everything off, we launched our new Snapchat channel page yeah. thing. Snapchat. Snapchat stories. You've for heard all. of it. Uh, we did that last week. So we're going to do something kind of fun today. We are going to show you our Snapchat ghost. You scan that with your phone, and then that will give you the secret word for our last giveaway for today's show, including a little tease of what we'll be giving away. So. Scan that guy with, with your, phone. your phone, with your smartphone. Can't use, you know, a landline or <laughs> an old flip phone. <laughs> snap, snap, snap. This contest is completely unavailable to. <laughs> <laughs> not work. So anyway, once you scan that, you'll be following us on Snapchat, and then you can see our latest snap with our special word for today, and a little tease of what we'll be giving away at the end of the show. And in the future, we'll do just some fun stuff like around the studio, show you things that are back in stock like the Guar Plush, uh, Crown Star Sales. Us being maybe silly at work. Yep. Kind of fun. So next up, uh, patch 2.0.9 is live. It went live earlier this week. Uh, it was a very small incremental patch, but it did have a very big fix um, for a issue where you uh, weren't getting ultimate from healing abilities. Who uses ultimate? <laughs> No so deal. we won't have a patch next week. It'll just be a regular maintenance, I believe. And then after that... I don't uh, think we're even having a maintenance nope. next week. Hey! Oh, man, holiday. No time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what else did we do? Last weekend, uh, we were at the Roleplay Convention, RPC in Germany. Yep. Kai, our German community manager, was there. He was. Uh, we did some presentations with game director Matt Fire, Lauren Schick, uh, Lightning Cosplay, and also Beyond Infinity, the guild. Uh, here you can see a picture of Matt on Skype with Kai translating in perfect German. Um, we that's also a took a lot of, I know. <laughs> I was actually wondering that if he that's quite just a, library. a background or if that's I'll bet know, he has real that books. books. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell I'm not a reader, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, the, um, Everyone in attendance was able to ask questions for Matt. Um, I know they pulled some questions from the forums. So that was kind of fun. Um, we also took a lot of pictures of Lightning Cosplay, which you can see here. There she is. Perfect match from our cinematic trailers. And then we also had a Nord, which you can see again. That is an amazing perfect costume. Perfect match. Looks like he came right out of the photo. He did. Wow. Except he's not on a mountain. But that's OK. We won't judge. <laughs> And here we have the Nord and Elf. They had a, um, a background where everybody could stand, so it looked like they were kind of in the game. Mm -hmm. 
but you know they weren't some amazing <laughs> costumes uh oh <laughs> and hey look at that we got some fallout in our esotu <laughs> straight from the vault <laughs> and here's a female dova keen awesome costume mm -hmm. oh i thought there was another one <laughs> Um, you want that one? Oh, yeah, that thing. Uh, so this is a Scuttler sculpture mm -hmm. uh, created by one of our fans in Germany. Um, he actually brought this sculpture to the show and was, I guess posed it outside of the show just so we could show some yeah, pictures. Yeah, kind of the, uh, the booth pet for the show. Really, really detailed. It's very lifelike. Yes. I think he was actually built to scale. Oh, wow. You know, if Scuttlers were mm -hmm. real. So cool. awesome. He didn't like uh, let us take it back though. No, <laughs> we tried. <laughs> uh, there was also a community party on Saturday, which a lot of people were in attendance, having fun, doing the party thing. So next up, we did get some uh, hoodies back in stock on the Bethesda merchandise store. They were the three Alliance hoodies, the Altmer, the mm. Breton, and the Nord. Super comfy, you guys. Yes. It's really, really comfy. So there they are there. And there's also a sale going on at the store.bethsoft.com um, through the weekend for $15 t-shirts and $45 hoodies. I think that goes through Tuesday. So get them before they're gone. Do it. Uh, we also have a crown store sale happening. It started yesterday. It'll be going through the weekend until Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. Um, we have a number of things, 50% off, um, and then after this sale, they're going to be removed from the store. So kind of giving you guys a chance to buy it cheap if you're kind of on the fence, weren't really sure. Uh, these include the chef and blacksmith costumes, uh, a couple of the mounts, all nine common motifs, but the motif packs are still going to stay in the mm -hmm. store, so you can still get those. Just the individual ones. And then uh, mm -hmm. the bantam and pony guar pets, 50% off. In addition to that, we have a black Sench Panther mount for a limited time, which you could see here. Very so nice looking. Mm -hmm. Glowy eyes. Ooh, it's super fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this guy is going to be available now until Tuesday, also at 10 o'clock a.m., and he will cost 2,500 crowns. Awesome. Get it. Yes. And I'm sure, as you all know, console launch is just around the corner. We're <laughs> actually a little under two weeks away. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, my gosh. So June 9th. <laughs> and we will, have a, a, we will be playing the console version during next ESO Live. We'll have a few things to show. So we hope you'll join us. It'll be fun. Yep. Uh, lastly, we actually just put up a message uh, shortly before the show started about fraudulent ESO game keys. Um, we have seen an increase in the sale of fraudulent keys. Uh, we want to let you know that if you are using a fraudulent key, we'll, we be, we'll be deactivating your account on Tuesday, May 26th. Uh, you will be receiving an email if you're affected by this, uh, so that way you can still regain access to your game. We won't be deleting your character. Um, we also put up a list of all the official retailers where you can buy ESO keys. So this will be on Reddit. It's on our official forums. Check it out. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah. So basically, fraudulent stolen, keys for anybody. cards are not Yeah. <laughs> for anybody who's wondering, is they're keys that were purchased with stolen credit cards. No good. Mm -mm. So take a look. It's up now. You can kind of scroll through and see what's going on. Get some more details. So in happier news, <laughs> we will be taking a look at our Collectible Creatures Fan Art Contest winners, um, runner-up, and honorable mentions next. So a few weeks ago, we started our Collectible Creatures Fan Art Contest. We got hundreds of entries, and it was difficult, but we did narrow it down to three winners, some runners-up, and we'd like to share some of the honorable mentions, too, because we had so many great entries. Mm -hmm. So here are some of our honorable mentions. Um, this first one is Dangers of Valenwood by Alicia Straub. 
from the United States. This is a cinch tiger by Marco, Marco W. in Germany, uh, another one of our honorable mentions. This is, oh boy, German. Der Bain, Einer, no, no, oh, oh, you're Freundschaft. braver than I. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Germans. By Christine in Germany. Kai's upstairs just rolling his I know, eyes. <laughs> I know, he's shaking his head at me, I'm sure. I'm not going to try this one, but it is a French entry by Richard. <laughs> this is Hunting Time with Arkaba by Benjamin in France. Oh, Kai's freaking out in chat. <laughs> Why? Uh, this is Riding the Darting Guar by Nicholas in France. And now we are into our runners up. This is a adorable piece called Bedtime Stories in Cold Harbor by <coughs> Karen in the Netherlands. I'm actually using this one as my wallpaper right now. So cute. I <laughs> love this one. Our next runner up is Playing Games by Erin in the United States. And if you can't see it, the book underwater is The Lusty Argonian Maid. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. This one is called Let Us Devour Together by <laughs> Autumn in the United States. If you can't see, basically what's going on here is there's a werewolf devouring his prey, and then he spots this cute little kitten, and his group mates are kind of like, well, okay. And then they're best friends. <laughs> <gasps> All right, third so place. we're into our winners. Woo. So our third place winner is Guar Express by Ilva in Sweden. We love this one. So it's awesome. got a little um, monkey hanging on for dear life, uh, a little torch bug down below. It's a monkey on the back. <laughs> and the poor Argonian is just <clears throat> racing along on his guar mount. This is a great, great entry. Mm -hmm. Second place, Draugr Stallion by Zach Piper in New Zealand. Now this is actually a mount based on um, our cinematic trailer mm -hmm. that we saw. And, you know, it's a good idea. Might be kind of cool if maybe we did this one day. Yeah, maybe one day. I don't know. So, drum roll please for first place. Here we go. That's my drum. And our first place <laughs> is Hang In There Baby by Jody Stockwell in the US. I have to say, I would have a similar face <laughs> if I was falling off my guard mount. <laughs> Yeah, this is a great piece with a lot of movement and shading and the lighting and I love it. And the angle that it's at too. Yep. I mean, I'm no artist, but it seems like it'd be pretty difficult to do top down like that. Yeah, the angle. Our art team actually helped us do the judging on all of these. So everyone from like the art director down pulled together and, and shared who they thought were their top picks. And mm -hmm. this was the unanimous winner. Indeed it was. So congratulations to our winners, our runners up, honorable mentions. This was fun. <laughs> so uh, coming up next, we are going to do our first giveaway. We'd like to introduce our lead graphics programmer, Matt McCloskey, who's going to help us with our giveaway. Hello, Matt. There he is. Hello. <laughs> we are actually giving away his hat. Where are we? Oh, we're over here now. <laughs> we will be giving away Matt's hat. But we'll so, give you a fresh one. Yep. It wasn't on his head. What's wrong? What's wrong? With this? I mean, oh, unless sure. you really want the one he was wearing. It's cool. Either way. <laughs> can, can I ask you guys a question? Yes. Who, who is this guy? <laughs> it's one of our fans. He has his own hat. <laughs> so. It's not the hat we're giving away, right? <laughs> it's not. But you know what? You could totally wear a netch on your head. That's cool, too. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want to? <laughs> so our keyword for this giveaway is going to be inning. Like. Baseball innings, oh. like nine innings or 10, 11, 12, <laughs> depending what happens. I-N-N-I-N-G for our giveaway. It looked like this hat was probably a one size fits all. It is. It has, has the adjustment if, if it in the back. If it can fit my head, it'll fit Dan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if it can fit Matt's big head, you are golden. So funny that the word is inning because we were just at a baseball game yesterday. Yep. Well, not you, sorry. 
Nobody <laughs> but, uh, loves me. Uh, we did attend the O's game yesterday. Hour and a half rain delay. Oh my gosh, such a long <laughs> rain delay. And we were just kind of standing out waiting, waiting, but they did win. It was so, fun. congrats, O's. Everyone is doing their inning. Oh, there's somebody who didn't spell it right. Two N's, not 20, just two. <laughs> okay, so we should get a winner. Awkward silence. Okay, here it is. <laughs> Uh, our winner for the hat is Gotrim123. Congrats! Congrats! Uh, Jason or Kai will be in touch with you on Twitch, so check your messages. Um, it'll be in your inbox somewhere, maybe the other tab if you're not following us. Uh, you should just follow us. You should probably just follow us so we don't have to deal <laughs> with this every time, but uh, uh, give them your information and we will send it out to you. Uh, so next, we are officially going to get into our Life at Sauce segment. Here we are again. Still with Matt. I'm still here. <laughs> uh, so Matt, again, is our lead graphics Lead graphics programmer, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the slide said something different, so I was kind of like, ah, which one? <laughs> um, as always, we will be doing a Q&A with Matt. If you have any questions for him about his job or himself, maybe his hair, post them up in chat. <laughs> Please and we do. We will pull a couple. <laughs> um, so just for starters, um, can you explain what you do here as a lead graphics programmer? Uh, so as a lead graphics programmer, I create the graphics systems for the game. You don't say. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe it. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't really understand what that is, but I mean, the short version of that answer is everything you see on the screen. You do it all? Is, is, but uh, a little the longer answer is it's basically we write the mm -hmm. rendering layer, um, which it's, it's, we call it painting with light. Mm. So it's uh, the artists will create models with materials. These materials have properties. They'll set up the world, they'll set up the scene, they'll set up the lights, and then as a graphics programmer, what you do is you you recreate the physics of the world, how this scene would look given these these properties. So we'll write all the mathematical algorithms that determine how uh, lights of these properties will interact with materials of these properties. Mm. Uh, we'll create you know specular highlights, uh, normal mapping, create the shadows, uh, and then all that gets rendered to the screen. Um, and so I'm responsible for the layer of code and the shaders and the algorithms that, that present all that. So like the light filtering through the trees or everything. the shine on a heavy armor? That, that's, that's what we do. And He's awesome. like, yes, just everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all of it. All, uh, yeah, even on top of that, we'll do you know, the post-processing things like the depth of field, color mm -hmm. correction, you know, all those things. So that, that all comes through us. Very cool. Right on. So how did you how did you break into the industry? Let's kind of go back in time, and, and then how did you? Uh... It, it, it's funny how that worked out. I, I I used to think that I had a very unique story, but uh -huh. it turns out it's very common in this industry. But yeah? <laughs> at the time, um, you know, I was going to school for music. I was pursuing a career as a musician. We have heard this before. Uh, right, right, right. I thought I was unique. Uh, but um, what but, did you play? Uh, guitar. It was. Uh, I went to school for classical and jazz guitar performance. Oh wow! You still play? I do. I do. Awesome. Could you guys guess that Matt is a musician? Play guitar and is a musician. <laughs> I don't play the role well. Um, but what had happened was, is just even when I was a kid, I was always programming for fun. I liked to make my own games, especially when I was a kid. And the you know the Infocom text adventures were a big thing, and, mm -hmm. and I would sit at home and, and program my own games. And and uh, so I would just make games for fun, and I would post them on the internet. And um, a company who made Super Nintendo games, so I'm kind of dating myself here, <laughs> contacted me and they said, you know, how would you like to make games professionally for us? And, and I said, well, how about yeah? And so they, uh, they, they brought me up and, and that's what I've been doing ever since. Was designing or was programming for the cartridge different than very different. I mean, it was it now? Uh, most definitely. Uh, I mean, at the time, everything was, you know, sprite based. You had, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was very limited hardware. Um, you know, but that's that's part of the industry is you definitely, as the hardware and technology expands, you you reinvent yourself, you relearn, you you adapt mm -hmm. with with the technology of the times. Very cool. So, do you have any advice for somebody who would want to get into the industry, potentially work for you? 
Um, well, yeah, a absolutely, mm -hmm. because uh, I'll, I'll interview a lot of people here, and uh, absolutely, you know, education is important, uh, particularly you know, math and uh, things like that. Um, it's 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 definitely a good thing to have a good foundation. But one of the things that's important to me when I look at a potential candidate, I'll look at um, their passion, their you know how do they make games their own time, or are they continually striving to improve themselves? Are they looking at white papers? Mm -hmm. Are they mm -hmm. are they trying to innovate? Um, so that's that's something you know a lot of people have asked me about that. You know how would I break in? You know it's so hard to get in. You know how how can I be different? How can I be unique? How can I make my mark? And that's most definitely the best way to do it is to you know make your own demos, make your own games, right? Um, uh, publish them, show them out, and it, that's it. It goes a lot farther than you think it will. There's a lot of good tools out there these days. <coughs> definitely. I'm sorry. Can I just cough? <laughs> <coughs> Springtime in Baltimore, kids. Yeah. Oh, I still have this Allergies. leftover awful cough. Sorry, I've been holding it in while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have you? What have you worked on at Zoss that you're particularly proud of or really excited about? Um, no, I mean, well, a lot of the I was I was mostly responsible for the effect system for the mm -hmm. game. So all the particle effects, abilities, uh, weather system, oh, you cool. know, all, yeah. those, mm. all those things. Uh, so I'd written. The effect system, and that's that's most definitely a continually evolving system. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to putting new things in for that. Cool. So can you talk about what you're currently working on for ESO? Well, right now it's 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 not nearly as exciting as it has been because we're we're you know we're wrapping up the console versions. So it's definitely mostly polishing mm -hmm. any last minute issues that might pop up. Um, there's a lot of things that are specific to just the console versions as far as uh, you know, Sony and Microsoft have their own certification requirements. So right. we're making sure all those things are sorted out and it's just you know, nailing down the last of the boards mm -hmm. before, uh, before it hits the stores. Two weeks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, not yep. even two weeks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Um, so we can get into a couple questions here. Uh, P.S. Everyone loves your hair. That's the source of my superpowers. Ooh, <laughs> they really want you to like just whip it back and forth. Like, I don't, I don't maybe you're in a L'Oreal commercial. Our microphones wouldn't be able to take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just kind of little softball questions. Uh, what Super Nintendo game did you work on? Uh, Got some SNES fans in here. Right, so it was a company in New York called Advanced Productions, and uh, the games they were making at the time were War 2410 and War 3010. Mm -hmm. War. Cool. War never changes. Um, somebody was asking, how many hours go into designing just a small basic room? Now, I don't know if that's really you or uh, more art. It's, it's a little bit of both. Uh, it's very iterative when it comes to things like that because um, the graphics team and the art team definitely will work together on, on especially in the when you're starting a new game, you're starting the foundation and getting the technology together because mm -hmm. you, you create the tool sets and the abilities and the, and the algorithms and the shaders and everything that the artists will have to work with. Uh, and then they make amazing things with that. So, you know, in creating a room, it's definitely an iterative process in that uh, the, the art team will create the geometry, they'll create uh, the materials, the textures, um, bump maps, specular maps, roughness, mm -hmm. you know, they'll, they'll define the properties for everything in the world. So the, the geometric objects that create the scene, the materials that define the, the properties, and then my job will to be write the physics system and the, the mathematical algorithms that simulate how light interacts with that room. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that's from the very beginning, it takes a while because you're laying down the core technology, but, but once you have everything together, it goes, it goes like Kind of becomes building blocks. Right. Yeah. Um, so we, we kind of talked about this a little bit actually earlier, before we were live. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of rumors kind of circulating that the lighting that we put in, I think it was in update four or five, um, that that might have had some sort of effect on Cyrodiil and its performance. Right, I have heard that and I can confirm lighting, lighting was no effect on that whatsoever. Um, if anything, lighting in Cyrodiil is much less intensive than it is in anywhere else in the world because it's mm -hmm. generally just you know, global dynamic or, or you know, ambient lighting or you mm -hmm. know, sun lighting. And then we'll have local lights for effects or things like that. So generally lighting is not very intensive at all 
in serials, so that, that really wouldn't have much effect. Although, I mean, there, there are instances, and that's, that's the, the joy of working on an MMO is, you know, Cyrodiil, especially more than anywhere else, it's a very dynamic environment, mm -hmm. so you can never plan for what anybody's going to do, so, you know, if, if a number of people defy, decide to uh, cast an effect that, that will have multiple lights or, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. you know, right. we, and, and we, we have things in place to, to, uh, to compensate for things like that, but eh, it happens. <laughs> yeah. Everyone wants to know if you're going to be in the next Wayne's World movie. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, they, they love are, you. Are you a recruiter? It's a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you're a talent agent, I'll give you my number. <laughs> uh, somebody was asking if reflecting light is difficult to do in a game. Reflecting light. Yes. Um, I guess like on water. So that's how I'm taking it. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I carefully chose my words and use. <laughs> I use the word simulate when it comes to how we'll, we'll model how lighting uh, um, affects the world. Uh, so we, we generally won't, we definitely don't model reflecting light in real time. Uh, that's left to you know, our friends at Pixar and things like that. <laughs> uh, so they, that, so uh, that technique is called ray tracing, where you model the, the photons of light coming and how it will uh, you know, energy conservation, how it'll bounce off a particular surface, and how much of the energy is left, and, and what you know, al albedo of the surface is, is reflected. Uh, we don't do anything that, like that, so we, we do our best to approximate how, um, you know, especially for reflecting light. So we, we won't specifically model that, but we will we'll simulate it as best as we can. Mm -hmm. It definitely looks pretty believable, especially on like heavy armor, it's, it's, water, and that's why it's such a continually evolving um, uh, medium. That you know, we're we're always coming up with new ideas, new tricks, new new things to do to to make it look more realistic. Mm -hmm. But that's why when you when you hear the stories about Pixar movies, how it takes twenty four hours to render one particular frame, that's why yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> that's why. Well, I think that, that the questions that just about wraps it up. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. Well, so, right. thank you so much thank for joining us. That was very me. interesting. Yes, party on, Matt. Party on, Gina. <laughs> 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 All right. So next up, we are going to take a look at the community events in game that you can participate in over the next couple weeks. Right, so we have a very active community both on the North American and European mega servers that are constantly holding in-game events live. In fact, there's usually one every day, if not more than more than one a day. So let's take a look at what's going on for the next couple weeks. Maybe you'll find something you want to participate in. Let's look. So the first one is the Lord's Moot in Sentinel Palace. This is for Daggerfall Covenant members. It's on Friday, so it's today at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's on the North American Mega Server. If you are interested, you can contact Stradius in game. Next, we have the Player Live Auction from the Blue Skuma Company. Uh, this happens weekly on Saturdays. It'll be at 10 p.m. Eastern Time on the North American Mega Server. Uh, head to Greenshade if you want to buy or auction an item, not a player. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is the Weekly Underground Market. This is also on the North American Mega Server. This one's on Tuesday, May 26th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time in Wayrest for Daggerfall Covenant members. And if you want to go, contact Thrawn. <laughs> Quick to the next one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, the Withered Tree Tavern Night. If you would like to join the Order of the Raven for food, drinks, sparring, prizes, and more, you should go. It's on Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You want to head to the Withered Heart Tree Tavern in Riften. <laughs> Had to stop and think. Not enough nouns. <laughs> Next up is the Wayrest Fighters Guild Adventure and Training Night. So this happens once a week. Um, it's on the European Mega Server. And they do a variety of different things. So you'll need to stop in or, or contact Leo the Dino to see what they're doing that particular night. The next one is on Thursday, May 28th. And the one after that is on Thursday, June 4th. This happens at 8 p.m. GMT plus one. 
Next up, we have the Wood Hearth Open Market. Um, this is basically merchants from all over the Dominion are going to be there selling their wares to all the buyers that are going to be in attendance. So these, this will be on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. North American Mega Server in the three. Do it. Oh, for God's sake. Do the, it. The three tree trading circle. Say that three times fast. I don't think I can. I couldn't even <laughs> say it once. <clears throat> Next up is Surviving the Nords of Skyrim. This is a bi-weekly event in which you can learn about the culture of Skyrim takes place every other Thursday. The next one is on Thursday, May 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's in Windhelm on the North American Mega Server, so that is for Ebon Heart Pact members. We have miscellaneous Valenwood events. So if you want to join a variety of different role play events in Valenwood, this is for you. It happens Thursdays at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on the North American Mega Server, obviously in Valenwood. Next up is the Festival of Life, and this is our last event. Uh, this is a traditional celebration of life and the making of life, it sounds like. <laughs> this is on Saturday, May 30th at 5 p.m. GMT plus 2 on the European Mega Server at Haven in Grotwood. All Mary Dominion members are encouraged to go celebrate. And you can contact Scat Matt if you're interested in going. <coughs> so that, oh, okay. sorry. It, <laughs> sorry. Um, so that wraps up our, oh. It doesn't wrap up. Uh, oh, somebody we in have chat, one more. Well, no, somebody in chat was saying that the live player auction, God damn it, we're over here. The live player auction is actually going to be in the Ralkaw Temple tomorrow. Aha. Uh, they had to move it. Okay. So just in case you're planning on attending. Change of location. Change of plans. All right, so then that wraps up our, For real. our live events. Um, next up, we're actually going to do a giveaway. This is our second giveaway. This is not the Snapchat one. <laughs> so hold on for that one. It'll be next. So this giveaway, we have some crystal cut piglets for your gaming pleasure. Uh, if you want to win one of these, we're giving away three. You want to type in bristle gut into chat. All right. That's it. You just type it in. <laughs> <laughs> so these little guys go into your collection. They are available to all characters on your account once you pick them up. Yep. You, you, <laughs> just, you just pick them up. And um, <laughs> for anybody who purchased the console transfer SKU, these little guys will transfer with you. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Didn't we send out a mailer recently about... The we console did. transfer? We did. Maybe we it can was talk yesterday. about that. Yeah. So we, we sent it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the the co the account copy happens on June first. And that's so. for anyone who is eligible and purchased yep. the um I forget what we were calling it officially, the account with console transfer yep. or something. Okay. Save us, Jason. <laughs> All right. So the first winner is Ooh, these are some names. <laughs> There's a lot of vowels. Sotha Televeri? <laughs> Winner one. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> Winner two is going to be Ali Fair. Okay. Boy, I am, I am struggling here. <laughs> uh, Sig Trick is the final winner for the Bristlegut Piglets. Congrats Yay. on your little piggies. So, as usual, Jason will be in touch with you. Um, on Twitch. <laughs> Boy, I'm just at a loss for words today. <laughs> Three-day weekend. Time. That means it's time to answer questions, right? I think we should. <laughs>
Kevlardo underscore ESO. Um, can you confirm that ESO Plus players will not have to spend crowns for DLC? Yes, we can confirm that. If you are currently an ESO Plus member, uh, you will have access to all DLC without the need to spend additional crowns. Yep. The only reason you need to buy it is if you dropped ESO Plus and needed yep. to get the DLC. Who would do that? Right? No one. <laughs> all right, next up, this is from Emid. Have you considered making a proper in-guild mail system? There's no way to mail all guild members when needed at this time. Mm. Yes, it's something we've discussed internally. It's something we would definitely like to add to the game. While there's no immediate plans for it, it is something we would very much like to get in at some point. All right, next question from Arkamir. Will there be differences between the PC and Mac version and the console versions in regards to DLC release dates or features that are only available on one platform? Uh, so generally speaking, we are going to release major updates on PC first, and then we will do console uh, shortly afterwards after we pass the first party certification, which takes some time. And we don't want to just hold the update for PC while we wait for that to happen. Um, that said, all platforms will have access to the same features and content that's included with an update. Great. Yay. This one's by Solak. Are the Nightblade ability Concealed Weapon and Dragon Knight ability Whip supposed to completely ignore dodge? No, they are not. Um, so thank you for the report and letting us know. We will make sure this is fixed in our next content update. Next question from Alcast. Caltrops does not stack in PvE, but every other skill does. Is it supposed to work like that? Uh, this is working as intended because the ability takes up such a large area and is very powerful in general. Uh, we're not against changing this, but we are currently happy with how it's working. Okay. This next one is by Kiragragi. Kiragragu? I think so. Will we be able to disable the guild voice chat channel based on ranks in the console version of the game like PC players are able to do with text chat? Yes. You can set whether individual ranks can join the officer channel or general guild channels. There you have it. Oh, another one from Kura... How did you say it? Kura Grog... No, I'm going to try again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, another question. Uh, the Durox Bain set is a PvP vendor heavy item set, so I assume it's intended to be used in PvP. Why does it have the sturdy trait, which is completely useless for PvP? Um, in the next major update, we will be awarding players with random traits on these item sets so that you can get exactly what you want. Uh, additionally, we'll be revisiting item traits in the future to add more exciting bonuses, maybe like ultimate generation. Ooh, ooh awesome. <laughs> All right, this one's by Gitterick. I would like to be able to buy crown store items from special tabs via in-game merchants. I would like to visit a blacksmith, for instance, to buy a set of armor costumes or visit the stable to buy mounts. It would add a bit of immersion, and things like mounts could be visually advertised at the stables. Has there been any discussion along these lines? So we have actually discussed adding the option to buy crown store items outside of the crown store itself, although we want to be careful that we're not being too pushy with our crown store items. Um, we also want to make sure it's not confusing or misleading which items cost gold and which ones cost crowns and you end up buying something you didn't intend to purchase. So for the time being, Crown Store items will be kept in the Crown Store UI. All right, Wicked underscore Wolf has a question. Would you consider adding costumes that are based on the outfits from the ESO cinematic trailer, the Nord, the Breton, and the Altmer characters? What a good idea. That is a great idea. We love those costumes from the cinematic trailers and that's such a great idea that we're already working on it. So we can show you a couple <laughs> assets here. This is the male and the female version of the Breton. Of the Breton. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, this is the female and the male version of the Altmer. And finally, female and male versions of the Nord from the cinematic trailers. Those are awesome. 
Mm-hmm. Kind of cool. <laughs> All no right. ETA on this, by the way. <laughs> no, that's probably the next question. But it is being worked on. Yeah. This one is by Tannis Stormbinder. Why do melee weapons provide more spell damage than staffs? Very good question. Good question. Melee weapons have a higher damage stat than ranged weapons because it's harder to close in on a target and stay in range while attacking. All weapons provide both spell damage and well damage well damage and weapon damage pardon me close enough <laughs> <laughs> this allows players the capability to make high risk high reward builds like the magic base knight blade wielding a two-handed sword they deal high damage in melee range but their light armor makes them vulnerable to attack well-timed defensive abilities like shadow cloak are the key to survival good answer jess thanks <laughs> it's almost like i had it <laughs> oh, we had it prepared. <laughs> All right, here's a question from Saft. Are you happy with the current time to kill in PvP? Well, uh, health bars are currently ping-ponging a little faster than we'd like, um, but we are looking into potential solutions for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one's by Shade of Kin. I've been I read that as Shade of Skin. <laughs> oh, my. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> I've been messing around leveling up my alts and I noticed that some of the NPCs I've fought still have sparks or use ash cloud and I miss attacks. Is this intentional or is it simply a matter of not yet updating NPCs to use the same set of skills that players have access to? Hmm. NPCs always cheating. I know. Always. So cheap. They haven't actually been updated, but we think it's cool for NPCs to have some classic abilities and it's an awesome bit of trivia for players who have been around for that long. Indeed it is. Next question from... APOC. APOC. Let's go with that. Yep. <laughs> Could you do a feature about tanking and taunting in ESO, or give us a longer answer about the different intentions and decisions around it to help us understand some of the mysteries, like, can you over-taunt a boss? Mm. Does taunt make sense as the first attack? Why do some bosses ignore taunt? So, we do have a longer answer for you, so get your popcorn. Um, <laughs> abilities uh, such as Puncture or Inner Fire can be used to taunt a boss, uh, forcing them to attack you for 15 seconds. If the boss is taunted three times within 12 seconds, they will go immune to all future taunts. Uh, you should note that the last taunt applied will continue to be effective. Uh, this is to prevent two players from standing on opposite ends of a room, uh, taking turns taunting a boss, so it never really gets in range to attack anyone. Mm. Uh, currently, this immunity timer is a little too punitive and something that we are looking at revisiting in the future. Uh, some bosses have attacks that ignore taunt and are specifically designed to hit a random target. Uh, this was done sort of to keep players on their toes, and since everyone has access to block and roll dodge, uh, they should have some basic tools to sort of deal with these mechanics. Uh, using abilities such as Annulment from the Light Armor skill line can be useful against these bosses that shoot fireballs just at random group mates. Pew, pew, pew. Watch out for random fireballs. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have another one that's going to be a long answer here by Randolph Benoit. Question is, before Cold Harbor and becoming a soul shriven, where does Cadwell originally in Tamriel come from? Mm. Mm. We'd like to see more backstory on him. Well, we have a backstory. <laughs> so Cadwell, or as he prefers to be addressed, Sir Cadwell, though it's to be noted he is not, nor has he ever been a knight, was once an imperial citizen from the town of Charl in Cyrodiil. Like the player who is ex oh, spoilers, like the player he was executed <laughs> by agents of Moloch Ball and became a soul-shriven slave in Cold Harbor. But this happened untold ages ago. Exactly how this happened may never be known because Cadwell was cheerfully and daringly mad long before his execution. <laughs> he is almost certainly the oldest of the non-feral soul-shriven, and his, he has attained almost legendary status among them. Over the years, he's discovered all the nooks, crannies, hidden paths, and secret ways through the access tunnels that honeycomb the cliffs of Moloch Ball's realm. The Daedra gave up trying to keep him in chains long ago. His madness makes him essentially useless, his cheerful disposition makes him annoying, 
and his knowledge of Cold Harbor makes him impossible to hold captive. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> All right, here's one from Tandor asking, is any attempt being made to fix the launcher problem that results in players continually, re continu <laughs> continually receiving error 209, which is past manifest? Mm. Um, it lasts for a few days after each update. The solutions mentioned in the knowledge base fail to resolve the issue for which the universally accepted workaround is to close and reopen the launcher so the play button appears instead of repair or update. But it'd be nice to know if this was being worked on or at least acknowledged. Um, yeah, we are definitely aware that a lot of you are receiving error 209 after an update um, and that the knowledge base article that's there doesn't always address the issue. So we are working on that. Okay, faux show. This is by Hero of None. I understand the gameplay reason, but is there a lore reason you're not arrested for your crimes when you enter Cyrodiil? Cyrodiil's a lawless land. Mm. So, <laughs> General Nashtan, for an official answer of the Ebonheart Pact, says, The province of Cyrodiil is in the grip of all-out war. Imperial jurisprudence there has collapsed. Civil law enforcement cannot be the pact, military, pact military's concern until civil order returns. I can't speak for the other two alliances, but I'd wager they see it the same way. You know what I find amazing is that General Nesh Tan sounds just like you. I know. <laughs> oh, weird. Okay, nobody's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, My hero of none. Where am I? Yes. All right, so, sorry. Here's the next question. Will non-ESO Plus players be able to play DLC content on the PTS during its testing cycle, or do they have to pay or subscribe for the DLC up front? Uh, so all PC players, including those who are not ESO Plus members, will have access to the PTS. Uh, they currently do, and they will continue to have access when we begin testing future updates. Okay. Um, pretty good follow-up question to that, Yep, actually. So this is a question that we get so much that it, it isn't from anybody. We just threw it in. We cheated a little. <laughs> <laughs> will console players have access to a PTS? So we have one public test server environment that we use to test out new gameplay systems and content before introducing them to the live game. Because the console and PC Mac versions of ESOTU feature the same content, we do not have plans to set up separate PTS environments for each of the console versions, and we'll continue to only have one PTS for PC and Mac. All right, this is our last question. Um, are new forums going to be made for guild advertising for PS4 and Xbox, and when will it be available? Mm -hmm. A lot of folks are looking for console guilds already. Uh, yep, we That's are awesome. <laughs> actually in the process of getting these set up now, and we do hope to have them available before console launch. So keep an eye out. All right. So that is the end of our Ask Us Anything section. And next, we're going to go into Something we call lore bits. We'll explain and in a second. Okay, so this video you're about to watch, it is pre-recorded. It features Lawrence Schick and Zach Bush, and they're going to go over some of the frequent lore questions they've gotten in here at the studio from members of the development team. These are real questions. Yes, real questions <laughs> that they've gotten via email or just walk-ups. So we hope you enjoy. It's about six minutes. When it's done, we will be back to do our final giveaway, the one with the Snapchat. Hi, and welcome to this episode of Tamriel's Funniest Lore Questions, um, where we're going to go into some lore questions about Tamriel that are funny. Um, anyway, uh, I'm Lawrence Schick. I'm the uh, lore master for Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Unlimited. And this is, what was your name again? Uh, uh, Zach Bush. I, I knew that. Yes, yes. I'm a writer designer for Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Unlimited. So, what's our first question? <laughs> The answer is yes. Do they ever? Yes. 
Um, I, I'm sorry for asking you this question. I, I am to blame for this question. Um, but I needed to know, it was very, very important. I needed to know if someone could refer to troll dung in a particular objective. Had you just thought about the fact that traditionally in Elder Scrolls, the thing that trolls drop when you kill them is troll fat, then you'd have realized that of course their creature's a meat and bone. This is true, but it is a strange, wonderful, magical place, and uh, you know, who knows what can happen? I mean, would there, are there any creatures, I, I, let me ask you this now, are there any creatures, uh, standard creatures that you run into throughout Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Unlimited, who do not poop? Well, certainly creatures that come from somewhere else, like Atronox. Mm. Yes, they're, they're only temporarily uh, on this plane, uh, made up of, uh, of some sort of substance that they've accreted to themselves magically as they arrived. Uh, and so they, you know, they do not have uh, a need to uh, uh, poop. Yes, divest themselves of their... Uh, their yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, very well. The answer is, that is not one of his known titles. Um, actually, so that originally came up, there was a, uh, someone from Systems was interested in uh, coming up with a fishing reel, a special fishing reel, that also doubled as a Daedric prayer wheel to her scene, and wanted to make sure that, or wanted to see if that could actually be fit in somehow. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was one of the weirder ones. So, let me just speak a little bit to this uh, point. <clears throat> a lot of people just think, they have, they, they have a simplistic view of Oblivion and uh, uh, you got you know the Daedric princes up here, and you've got zillions and gajillions of, uh, of lesser Daedra beneath them. But it's more complicated than that in most cases. Uh, you've got many, many hierarchies of, of, of different Daedra. And up near the top, you've got uh, very powerful Daedra that are not as powerful as the princes, um, but they're called the Daedra lords. And some of them have their own spheres, uh, that they, their own realms of oblivion that they, that they handle, uh, that they rule. Um, and others are uh, minions of the Daedric Princes and manage subspheres of the Daedric Princes, greater spheres. Now, Hercene is one of the latter. Hercene has Daedra lords uh, who report to him and who manage other areas. And one of those Daedra lords is the Lord of Fishing. However, that's all I'm going to tell you about him or her uh, because uh, I don't want to reveal any spoilers because we've got plans for the Lord of Fishing. We can't just give them a little hint? The Lord of Fishing has a distinctive aroma. Oh, I see. No, fair enough. Okay, very well. The answer is the Thalmor Inner Council. Um, they basically uh, handle all sort of the, uh, um, sort of the things that don't necessarily require uh, constant attention of the, uh, the Alliance leadership. So when uh, Queen Eren is running off and getting in crazy adventures, uh, the Thalmor Inner Council can still operate uh, without her there and make the important decisions that the Dominion needs to make. Um, uh, originally this came up in uh, a quest because we had, uh, I believe it was, a, there was a Thalmor inspector who had showed up at a particular area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we weren't entirely sure why uh, Queen Irene herself would have sent you know, one of these people to go handle all this stuff. Uh, so we, we ended up needing to refer to uh, the, uh, 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 the Thalmor themselves, like the day-to-day -day operations. So um, I actually come to think of it, that wasn't very funny. It was just sort of, I don't know. Well, there's always our faces. Yeah, there, there's always our faces, so, so, so we'll include it. Let me elaborate a bit on this, because there's been, you know, funny or not, there's been a lot of questions about the Thalmor, since a whole lot of people played Skyrim and first encountered that term there. And there's a big difference between uh, the Aldmeri Dominion of our period and the Thalmor of ESO's period and the Thalmor of Skyrim, which happens a thousand years later uh, in the uh, Tamriel history than uh, Elder Scrolls Online does. We're the first Aldmeri Dominion in Elder Scrolls Online. In Skyrim, it was the third. And between the uh, events of ESO and uh, Skyrim, there's been a thousand years of conflict between Somerset and Tamriel. And the attitudes of the Thalmor in that time have hardened and embittered so that the Thalmor that you run into in Skyrim are really jerks. They're big jerks. Um, whereas, you know, in ESO, it's much different. Only about two thirds of them are jerks. Yes. Yeah, and actually, whenever I'm uh, uh, writing uh, for a character that is uh, in the Thalmor, involved with them, uh, the way I tend to think of the uh, the Dominion, uh, particularly, is uh, it is the struggle um, between what uh, Queen Irene is attempting to create 
and what uh, some uh, people in our government, more closed-minded, are attempting to create. So it's, it's generally about that particular struggle. Whereas in Skyrim, uh, it's the struggle that was lost. So. so, now we just have to make it funny. Yes. Where's that pie? I don't know. So, players of Tamriel Unlimited, do you have any funny lore questions? If so, send them into this address, this one right here, and we'll see if we can get them on the air for you. And we're back. We hope you Good enjoyed stuff. that mm -hmm. video. Um, we'll probably do more of those. Little lore S bits. Yes. <laughs> So next up, we're going to do our final giveaway. This is the one for, that, we're, that we're using Snapchat for. So you'll need to look for the word that you need to enter on our Snapchat that you hopefully started following us <laughs> earlier in the show. Um, the giveaway will be for one, well, it's actually your choice, of one of three lithographs of the Alliance leaders. So that's Aaron, Yorin, and Emmerich. So we will wait here and see what we get in chat. Looks like some people have gotten it. Oh yeah, and now I think everybody is kind of <laughs> catching on, <laughs> even if you didn't follow us. <clears throat> okay, well, let's do it, Jason. Ever winner? Yes. All right. Just hot off the presses. Winner is Nathan43082. Congrats. I wonder if that's his birthday. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> Things I wonder. Hmm. All right. Well, congratulations, Nathan. Uh, hopefully, you actually followed us on Snapchat um, and found it's the word fun. on you there. Should. It is kind of fun. There's cute little videos and pictures and stuff. Uh, so, that just about wraps up our show for today. Yep. Uh, we want to let you know that our next show is going to be on Thursday instead of Friday. Um, Thursday, what? Thursday, Thursday. It'll Cats be and dogs living together. <laughs> Mass chaos. Uh, so this will be on June fourth, also at four p.m. Eastern time. And as always, we look forward to hearing your thoughts on the show. You can let us know on our social media channels or on the official forums. That'd be nice, of please. <laughs> uh, we want to see creations. Also, if you have photos drawings, cosplay, Music. you name it. Uh, send it over to community at elderscrollsonline.com. And that wraps it up. So we hope you all have a wonderful holiday weekend. We understand there's several holidays going on this weekend across Indeed the world. Indeed there are. Not just Memorial Day. <laughs> and we will see you in Tamriel. Bye. Bye. Bye.